All right, hello everybody and welcome. Um, I've been kind of working on some things on my stream, so give me a little bit of a moment to see if everything is like looking a little better. <laughs> I'm trying to see if like the pixels are still there. They kind of are, so. Um, I've kind of done my best in everything that I could do for the moment um so hopefully the sound is working and everything so, okay it looks like it is so um i'm gonna just move on from that and start with the topic of today so in all of these just chatting streams that I'm doing generally, just focusing on things that I'm learning, things that I'm studying, I'm going to school for horticulture and ecological restoration. So I'm taking a lot of classes related to those subjects, um, including agriculture. And um, I, I have a little bit of a conflict with some of my classes now and then. Um, in my weed management class, um, we've been talking over some things like, they're just kind of picking our brains like oh what do you think about this what do you think about this um and sometimes the problems that i have with um some of the classes that are like that we have to take and everything they don't really give you the full picture of everything they're like what do you think about this little tiny box this this little area be like okay but and, and for all the new students and students who haven't really like had the chance to work in the fields that I have and studied some of the things that I have, they might not know how to look outside of that box that, that the institution has created. Um, I've seen that in a lot of my classes and um, I don't necessarily think it's intentional all the time, but so many of our teachers, you know, they're expected to um, they're expected to, to know about their subjects of interest, but um, in the same way, like, you know, they're only, they're, they're only, they're only meant to look at, you know, like what, what the system wants them to look at, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, that isn't what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about is, um, my organic weed management class and my organic weed management class is I'm also recording this so um, I'll, I will upload it on YouTube if it ends up being like super pixelated but um so I wanted to talk about weed organic weed management that's the class that I'm taking and I want to start off by talking about a discussion topic that we had to um, that we had to respond to and that was this topic had to do with um you know like inorganic mulches like plastic mulches and stuff these mulches like um they're they're necessary for the kind of farming that a lot of farmers do organic and not organic um, and and the, the mulch is like it's like this plastic mulch that just prevents weeds from growing That's the whole that's generally the point of mulch and also to keep the soil warm and and Germination rates higher in certain plants. So there's like a lot of benefits to mulch, but instead of using Natural healthy organic mulch, which we could totally use um, That's too expensive. So they buy this non biodegradable, unhealthy, unsustainable pieces of trash and throw them on the earth. And um, so that was part of the discussion, like what we thought about that. <clears throat> and it was mostly, the, the discussion board was mostly guiding us into like, well, what do you, what, you know, how, how should we go about this, you know? And it's all talking about regulations and policies and just like the politics of everything. And it sucks, it really does suck that um that we have to wait for things to go through a process in order to do things the right way um and i and i get capitalism capitalism sucks but you know to live in a capitalist society um like there's all these rules and regulations and stuff i get it but i'm a visionary <laughs> and i look at like the world as a whole and i'm just like you know what capitalism is a burden 
on our society. It holds us back from progress. It holds us back from sustainability. If capitalism um, prevents us from moving forward and doing the right thing for our planet, it's it's bad. <laughs> it's it's really bad. So. Obviously, I have a lot of conflicts with that, um, and it's really hard for me to answer and like discuss these questions that we have in the discussion boards because I'm like, okay, well, we shouldn't be doing this at all. Why are we using plastic mulch? Don't do that. We need to look at like the real reason for this. Um, what what is the real reason for using mulches? Okay, well, we need this for this system that we're doing okay well let's look at the system what's wrong with the system why isn't why can it not be done in a healthy sustainable way but the truth is it can it can be done in a healthy sustainable way it's just not because this is just the way people like to do it um because uh and and ultimately we could like discuss the reasons why we we need to be doing it right now um it's not something that we can change overnight and i get that um, and, uh, I guess the end, the end argument would be, well, what about population growth kind of thing? How can we provide for so many people? And let's be honest, we have too many people. <laughs> like, we need to spread people out. If the land can't sustain the people, then, um, those people need to move somewhere else in a different area. We can't have an overabundance of people with, um, because that's going to stress the resources of an area. Um, but that's too much work for most people and I know I know this is just like me going on like a long journey through time and space with with thoughts and stuff and that's that's how I work all the time um, especially when it comes to like solutions for for sustainable futures so um, uh, that's that's my 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 little rant. Hi Tarek, yeah, uh, we're back. I'm not playing video games today. I'm talking about my weed, my organic weed management class. Um, and I have like a bunch of things to talk about and including soil. So I'm going to read a little something that I wrote and this was, this was in response to my discussion board. So, um, this was in response to the discussion board question, which had to do with, you know, like, well, how, how can, you know, what can we do for organic farmers um, involving, like, weed management? Like, how can we make it so that, you know, it's easier on the farmers? And this has a lot to do with so many other things involving, like, organic regulations, which are kind of bullcrap. And they, like, it's great that I, I really like the organic movement. I mean, it's going in the right direction. It's not perfect. Um, but because of all the all the, the the stress and the challenges put on organic farmers organic farming is really expensive and that's really not fair because like we need food that is free from agrochemicals and free from poisons and garbage um and and conventional conventional agriculture doesn't have that conventional agriculture has garbage in their food and um and agrochemicals and it's not good for human health everything should be organic <laughs> everything like there shouldn't be a conventional and organic everything should be organic but we have all these rules and regulations and policies and capitalism getting in the way of everything so that's just something to think about um, as I respond to this discussion as I read my response to the discussion board um, and so I'm talking about uh, capitalism so we live in a supply and demand system Lazy consumers don't change the world or make a positive difference. Um, extra labor for the health and sustainability of our world requires efforts, and many already have an unsustainable mindset. Trying to produce yields that are above and beyond the sustainability of areas. I have talked about that, like, there's no reason for us to overproduce. Um, ultimately, our society suffers from um, an undereducated, under-resourceful majority population. Um, and that's really um, talking about, and I'm talking about farmers particularly. Um, farmers don't have access to high education as very often. And again, uh, the institutions are very like, you know, they teach you what they want you to learn. So I think the important question is, is are there sustainable practices that don't require pl plastics? The answer is yes, but it's complicated to start and to put it more simply, many farmers farm things that we don't need in ways that are unsustainable. This creates a dependency on more unsustainable practices and products. Um, so I talked about that 
I talked about that as well. Um, there, there are sustainable options, but um, the the point, the problem is, is that we have unsustainable agricultural practices. So you're going to do something that's unsustainable, then everything. If you want to continue to do that, you're going like it's not sustainable. So eventually, there's going to be resources are going to need to be put into this unsustainable practice for it to continue. So that's when you get agrochemicals to restore the soil that's been depleted by unsustainable practices and that's when you get these plastic mulches and all these other things and all these things inputted into the system which makes keeps making things worse and worse and worse so um moving on um the solution i think the solution is education and with the hearts of the people coming together and not settling for less but by putting our most talented minds to the objective of finding the best most suitable practices and developing a protocol to transition farmers to those practices um because right now we have a lot of subsidies going to um big agriculture you know no subsidies are going to like organic farm like small organic farmers which is what we need that is sustainable smaller farms permaculture farms um forest farms and such like that um that's that's going to give us sustainability um and it's going to be a transition it's not something that can happen overnight but these large-scale agricultural operations are not sustainable and um we can't just abandon our farmers we need to find a way to transition them so that they can continue doing you know farming <laughs> they, they they just need we just need to give them more education and the opportunity to transition um their land um if the land is suitable for farming after all the stuff they put into it um so there might be like periods of like waiting you know um or reforesting certain uh certain large areas of land so um so the, a problem is is that the people don't want to change. Their beliefs get in the way, people get in the way, unsustainable industries get in the way. Like, that's, that's a given. Like, you know, people don't want to change. Change means adding more resources into the picture. Change means, you know, um, you know, like forming new habits and everything. So it just seems more challenging. People just don't like to change. Like. It's, it is effort. It does take effort because when you're adopting something for the first time, like, it's new. So, like, it just seems like the world is going by and, like, like slow. Like, everything you're doing is slow and everyone else is going faster. Um, because ultimately, what, what do farmers need? They need money. Um, they, they need to take care of their families. Um, so we need to give them that. Um, also, <clears throat> we have... In so, like... We could do all of that. It takes a lot of effort. Um, but aside from all the effort that it takes, we also have industries that are preventing us from moving forward, like the animal ag industry, the agrochemical industry, the plastic production industry. Um, they will obviously do everything that they can to keep the profits going to them instead of what truly matters, um, which is sustainable food production and um, product manuf manufacturing for the people and the planet. Um, so I just want to like stress that like these industries are unsustainable and they are creating um, more more issues for you know the food we need we need sustainable food production and these industries are preventing sustainable food production and causing more problems and then all this money is going to help them helping these unsustainable practices when it should be going to creating sustainable practices like it's it's just that's why our food production right now it's going down it's, it's not just climate change these these practices are terrible and they're they're not helping anybody you know everyone's got to eat like this should be like and this should be important <laughs> to people but um anyways uh, a big problem is that society still invests in uh animal agriculture, monoculture systems, agrochemicals, plastics, etc. Organic farms are, uh, are helping in some of these areas, but we have to understand that this is a big reason why we aren't moving forwards. All of the resources and the subsidies are going to these unsustainable industries. A part of that is um, because of 
corruption and unchecked power on the part of these industries and a population sorely lacking in um, knowledge and education. So I know this is like a really big answer and I don't think my classmates really like <laughs> reading all the things that I have to say to like really simple discussion board questions but um, this is a, this is more than just like something like so much like you know this is this is more than than what they're they're giving us they want us to look at something and just not go outside the box and be like oh you know in order to stay within the parameters of this broken system we have to um, do other broken things <laughs> and 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 make things harder for ourselves it's 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 just something that I can't get with So what are the solutions? Um, small organic permaculture forest farms and multi-cropping systems are, in my opinion, from the knowledge that I gained from all my studies, is the most sustainable that I have come across. And we can come up with more sustainable options and resources to accommodate them. We just, we need people to be on board with this together. And I think, and that's kind of why I like to talk about this stuff and I upload things on TikTok because the more people that know about this, you know, the more it can be a part of conversation because um, that's kind of, you know, everyone needs to eat. We need to have clean, healthy food for everybody. Um, and I know this is a weed management class, but it's all related. It's all related. Um, and to, to be honest, weed is just, it's relative to whoever's looking at it. Weeds can be good to some people and bad to others. So anyways, the state of our world reflects the lack of progress and innovation of the human race and it's imperative that we all get on the same page. So I know I'm repeating a lot of this stuff. I'm just trying to make sure I get all my thoughts out. We can find alternatives and that's what I really wanna stress. Um, the best thing that we can do for our future is to be open-minded and continuing to make more sustainable choices every year. Um, we are very capable, we are a very capable and innovative species. Options and opportunities do exist. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, um, on a little note, uh, world hunger exists because of malnourished, <laughs> yeah, so, um, world hunger exists because of malnourished hearts and minds with people in power being selfish, uneducated, and lazy. Ultimately, if our world had to suffer because we produce more um, than an area can ecologically and sustainably provide, then we need to ask ourselves if we are doing this for the right reasons. So yeah, that's the ultimate like point I wanna leave off on with like weed management. Um, and a few other things. No, I'm, I'm not finished with weed management. <laughs> um, but it's a really good note to take away from all this is, um, our, we shouldn't, our world and other people shouldn't have to suffer because some people in some places want to make more than is necessary. We don't need, like, we, we make a lot in, 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 in America. We produce a lot of food. And not all of that is for the population. Like, as it so stands, like what happens is, is we produce a shitload of food and then we export it to other countries and sell it at top dollar so we can get lots of money for it. And then we, we buy a bunch of like food from like Mexico and other poor nations and countries, um, and then like we ship it in, and and then sell it for cheaper. It's this is this is another reason why capitalism sucks. Like the that the food that's grown nearby like should go to the people nearby, and if we have extra, then yes, share it for sure. But um, how much extra we should have like that that should be up to other experts. I'm not. I'm not here to say how much we should make or not make, but um, we waste, waste a lot of food in this country and it's not fair. Um, okay, looking at my notes.
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm also reading a, spon- a response that I had to one of my classmates um, who believed that if we had better sustainable agricultural solutions that they would already be in effect. And a lot of people have this perspective, so this is kind of a response to that overall perspective. Um, but to clarify, um, people think that if we had better options that we would be doing that the experts would already be doing it right now the farmers would already be doing it now and that's not true there's so many things that get in the way of that so um let's explore what those things are well there's plenty of reasons why better solutions would be avoided and i kind of talked about this before um, when i talked about the um the industries industries like the plastic industry and the agrochemical industry they need profits Right, and um, both those industries rely heavily on agriculture, on agriculture, conventional agriculture that uses that. Um, so it's not a mystery what they're willing to do to protect their their assets, their their profits, um, being as they are both unsustainable industries. Um, so you know, there's a lot of pressure on organic farming in general um, because they these industries aren't making much money off of the organic farming industry so they don't want that industry to thrive because um the more people who use um you know like stray away from plastic and the more the more farmers that stray away from agrochemicals well that means a decrease in the profits from those industries the plastic industry and the agrochemical industry they don't want that um so we need to make it an easy transition for everyone and it's challenging um it's challenging because organic farming is still a flexible practice so we can do something that might might appeal to some organic farmers but not others because organic farming um like there there is like a set of kind of regulations and parameters that that organic farmers have to go around but um their practices can still be pretty varied um organic farming doesn't mean regenerative regenerative farming so regenerative farming like putting putting like building soil and putting you know putting healthy you know nutrients back into the soil it doesn't mean that you can you don't have to do that with organic farming Organic farmers can still ruin the soil with tilling and compression from machines. And um, a factor I feel is often overlooked is the long-term outcome of such practices. Um, I worked for an organic farmer. Well, she wasn't organic certified, but um, the only thing that would have prevented her from doing that was the seeds that she bought. But it's really expensive to be an organic farmer. so. Um, I can understand why she didn't get certified, but generally all her other practices were organic. But um, she did some things that were pretty unsustainable. Um, you know, machines going over the soil, and you know, like you do the best that you can, but um, those machines are compacting the soil around it. It's it's not healthy. Like her soil quality was so dry and crumbly. Like there was no soil aggregation. She was not like really putting back into the soil very very much like it um the soil the soil can't take that kind of abuse forever um and on top of that she did um she used she used plastic mulches um the the soil had to continuously be tilled um so that just broke up soil aggregates, and I'm going to talk about that with soil, but like that's not good. <laughs> you don't want to till the soil repeatedly um, because that's just going to like kill all the soil life in it, and then things you know make it difficult to grow. And when you're trying to plant things and you have hard soil from the compaction, from the tilling, from you know the mono crops, like I don't, you know, like her soil is just terrible. And she would have to keep adding soil to it again and again, but she wasn't building, she wasn't building soil life with it. She was just dumping a bunch of compost that was made somewhere else and brought there and 
it, it did not help her condition at all. Um, she also wasn't educated, like she didn't go to school to learn how to farm. She didn't understand the chemistry of soil. She didn't understand soil biology or soil chemistry. She didn't understand like um, how these practices really harmed like the soil and made it difficult um, to be to have to be sustainable. And she also didn't want to listen. <laughs> um, so I just kind of left it. Um, so yeah, organic farming doesn't mean regenerative farming. So there can be very unsustainable practices in organic farming. Um, and, and that's important because we're still talking about, you know, like how can we, you know, if there were practices that could be given to everybody, like that would be great, but not everybody does the same things. Some people use machines and some don't. Some people, um, you know, rely on plastic mulches and and some don't need to do that because they do multi-cropping. So there are different like ways you can, like organic farming is, is, is not like cut and dry completely. It's just more like, a, it's, it's definitely a step up from conventional farming, maybe like a couple steps up, but it still has, it still needs to be a lot better. So farmers can still ruin the soil with tilling and compression machines and a factor uh, the long-term outcomes of such practices are are very bad because you don't have um, regeneration of those nutrients. Um, and this is why farmers have to repeatedly pay for compost and manure and additives to the soil because they just they kill all the soil life by adding by adding all kinds of stuff that doesn't belong there. Agrochemicals, fertilizers, and compost that was made somewhere else with different kinds of soil that's not local and and it's it does have it does have a negative effect and of course you know like the machines compacting everything um and monoculture monoculture is also um a really un, a really like unsustainable um agricultural practice so monoculture is like when you have like one type of plant and all like all over a field so you'll see feeds fields of corn right there's no other plants planted within the corns there's no peas there's no squash it's just a bunch of corn that's monoculture and it can be done on smaller levels too you can have like a whole thatch of brambleberries you know blueberries or um blackberries or whatever or raspberries trees annuals it doesn't matter like it's just like one kind of plant in an open area nothing else is growing it's not it's not growing with other companion plants or anything. That's monoculture, and it's really bad. <laughs> it's bad because what happens um, when you plant like one plant at a time, like that plant is weak. It's it's very vulnerable to pests and diseases um, because like it doesn't have any like companion plants to help like help it like be stronger to help like companion planting, multi cropping like. The point of having a bunch of plants growing together at the same time is because um, they protect each other, they help each other, they either put nutrients in the soil that the other plant, the, the cash crop need, or it has, you know, it protects it from certain pests and diseases. Um, but you know, that takes extra effort and then at the end of the day, like the farmer has to pay for that. The farmer has to the farmer has to pay for multi cropping for you know adding more plants to the area. But you know what? They also have to add you know soil and agro and agrochemicals. Like all these costs stack up either way. So why not do the sustainable way? So there's definitely better options. Um, maybe not compatible for the political and social systems that we have and that people, you know, decide to devote themselves to, but I believe that we can come up with uh, viable solutions if we work together and prioritize sustainability and health over capitalistic pursuits. Um, I don't think research into harmful chemicals is the answer. Um, and I said that because, like, uh, the the um, the classmate that I mentioned uh, said that that would be a good idea. Like, oh yeah, we should 
we should research it to less harmful chemicals. No, we shouldn't be researching chemicals to put on the land at all, or the, you know, the, the plants that we're eating. We shouldn't, <laughs> like, it's, it's a waste. It's a waste of time and energy. We need to be investing in sustainable practices that do not require agrochemicals. Um, so this is what I think, the ins this is where I think the institutions can be really dangerous. Like, they're bringing in, like, people who don't realize, like, the bigger picture. And so, um, yeah, and they don't correct them either. So <laughs> it's, it's just, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. Because um, we want people to be educated and think for themselves. Um, and it's great that they're thinking and asking questions and stuff and like coming up with ideas, but we definitely, we definitely need innovative minds to, you know, put efforts where they're needed the most. So I think, you know, research into non-harmful products <laughs> and practices is the answer. Um, we don't need to settle for less and thus should avoid creating more problems for the future. Um, so I'm going to read a response from one of my classmates. Um, we'll call him James. Um, James says, education is definitely a fundamental aspect of the changes needed. Aside from the concepts and corrupt businesses and corporate demonizing, a large hurdle is that the science simply isn't there to have better options. For the scale that politicians need to effectively maintain a high level of sustainability, there needs to be better technology for goals that we have for enhancement of not just the environment, but for working in, in accordance with the current regulations. Um, I think I'm going to do this. Wait, I can't. I can. Again. Okay, so this is, um, oops. Sorry, Jared. <laughs> it's already, it's already on the open. Okay. Well, his name was Jared. <laughs> he went to Jared. <laughs> Okay, so, um, anyways, this was his response. So, um, he thinks that the problem with plastics is complex, and, um, when, when talking about education, because that's what I mentioned, like, education is something that, that we really need for everybody, but particularly the farmers, um, he says that the uh, simple solutions resulting from better technology can be explained to the politicians. It will be incredibly hard to affect the businesses that continue to use unsustainable materials okay sorry that was probably not fun to look at um i'll figure out a better way to do that next time <laughs> but um i mean i had to disagree because the science is absolutely there for better options regenerative farming and permaculture has been around since before colonialists came yeah i'm going i'm going to go there i have to go there um so native americans they steward the they stewarded the land for thousands of years before being invaded and um when colonists arrived they couldn't believe that the indigenous populations could make such abundance there was fruit and roots and nuts and edible and medicinal plants growing in abundance everywhere and it was because native americans tended them responsibly um and yet uh the dust bowl hit in the 1930s and it so it hit in the 1930s so and it of course you know what was what was that butthole's name Christopher Columbus he came in like um the 1400s so it only took a few hundred years for agriculture to bring about disaster like you know and Native Americans had been living on the land for tens of thousands of years you know doing doing this sustainable um food production so um because of terrible land stewardship of colonialists that came over um we had the dust bowl you know, and that's only the beginning, like, I, I don't know if anybody notices, like, driving up and down the five, um, from Oregon and California, like, all the way up and down, like, there's fields of dry earth and just plumes of dust. And I see it in Oregon, too. There's just, like, these plumes of dust coming up as these machines are, like, driving over the soil. It's ugly. It's terrible. Um, and in order for them to grow anything on that they have to add stuff to it not healthy things they have to add they have to add uh like 
un like unprocessed manures, so like stinky, gross, <laughs> like poop all over the place. Like it's like we should be beyond throwing shit around at this point in our um, evolutionary uh, <laughs> human adventure. Um, but yet they need to do that because they have to add stuff back to the soil. They have to add substance and so they do that and then they add, you know, other fertilizers and dirts and they, I mean, it's just like, and then they like till the soil and stuff like that and like they don't have any life in the soil. Conventional agricultural operations do not have life in the soil. It's all gone. They killed it. It's just, it's just a husk. It's just a bunch of like tiny particles of rock and uh, chemicals. So um, anyways, our political system is not sustainable um, and neither is our current state of food production. Technology, talking about the, cause he said, uh, he, he, it seems like he thought that, you know, technology is something that we really have to have. Like it's going to be, it's gonna make everything better for us. Um, but you know, like technology can be useful, but Native Americans, they didn't need technology. I mean, like, tech, I mean, like, they didn't have any huge machines and, and hoses and stuff, like, they didn't need that, and neither do we, you know, like, we have all the technology that we have now, and still, we're ruining the soil. Technology doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be good, but, you know, even if we did have better technology, like, at our disposal, I just don't think that, you know, it's, it's, it's necessary. I can't, I can't imagine any technology that's really going to be beneficial for us at this time. Um, because our, you know, our agricultural systems are bad. The agricultural systems are wrong. You know, technology is not going to fix our agricultural systems unless, like, we have, like, a program that says, okay, well, this is the best way to have food production for humans, and then all the farmers looked at it and be like, okay, so then everyone made that transition. Like, that's the only way I could see technology being of any help um, for, uh, for farmers at all at this point. So, like I said before, unsustainable practices require unsustainable options, so it's that unsustainable cycle that just continues. Um, due to the dependence that farmers have on unsustainable practices, efforts are being poured into unsustainable products, yeah. So, um, so we need to stop pouring our resources on, into unsustainable practices and products. Um, we need to find ways to transition everyone to all the farmers in, into, you know, better practices, um, slowly, obviously, and give them subsidies, um, cause we need food for everybody, and, um, all of that land is going to have to be detoxified from all, all the garbage, all the, like, all the, all the soil is gonna have to be built up, cause we need life, life in the soil. Okay, give me a second while I read my notes. I don't know how much I can, like, really stress how capitalism is such a burden to the progress, to progress, um, for, um, the, for Americans. Like, capitalism is just a huge challenge and like trying to trying to get around all the the obstacles of capitalism is just putting us back light years in our um social development as as well as um our food production practices um we're just straying farther and farther from more natural and sustainable futures um so rules regulations and policies 
should be used to prevent greed and corruption and all of those other nasty things, but it's quite the opposite. It protects big businesses, corporations, and their financial interests, making the world, the working class, have to choose between being the environmental hero and making ends meet. And that's in relation to, um, you know, the organic farmer. Um, and farmers in general, actually, farmers don't make a whole lot of money at all. Like, they're just... They're just being used by a system, uh, a very unsustainable system, <laughs> and it's not fair that they have to choose. So obviously, like, farmers need to eat, they need to take care of their families, so, you know, if there's a weed killer or uh, agrochemical or, like, a fertilizer that has been advertised to, you know, make their life better, they're going to pick that, because also, like I said, you know, farmers aren't as aren't really educated. They're, they're not a population that um, has higher education. And, um, and that's a problem because had, if they knew, if they knew um, all, all the options that they had, you know, maybe we would be, um, have more farmers transitioning to healthier practices. So, um, so we're still on weeds. And I just have a little bit more about weeds to talk about. Okay, so weeds pose a problem to farmers um, because farmers provide openings for them. Um, just as farmers and the working class provide the opportunity for big business businesses and uh, unfair political system to take all the profits and make obstacles for um, being sustainable so difficult. So. Um, when it comes to like growing anything, like um, when you're growing in your garden or if you have a large scale farming operation, if you leave soil empty, then that's, that's an opportunity for weeds to come in because that's when nature, nature wants to fill the gaps. Like th that soil needs to be filled. So, um, and a lot of, you know, farmers don't want that. They're like, oh, you know, they, they only want like one crop but that's not, that's not natural. That's not what nature does. Um, and so that causes problems. Um, and that's why it's important that if you are going to be doing like a cropping system, multi-cropping is the best because you're going to have, you know, um, you're gonna have crops that are gonna fill those spaces and you have to do it very strategically, you know, depending on the growth rates of certain plants. Like you're gonna have, for example, you can have corn and how long does corn take to go? Like you can um, plant, uh, I think squash first and then like the peas and then like, You'll have you'll have plants growing in that area before you know um, the the corn really poke up from the ground and everything like that. There's definitely a strategy to it. You want to make sure that you know the soil is going to be covered as soon as possible um, because otherwise you know that will mean less need for weeding because the, the surface area of the soil is going to be taken over um, and uh, kind of shaded from the canopy of the plants as they grow. So, um, a little thing about, uh, providing openings for weeds, and, um, I was, I was being clever by, um, making a connection to the political system, making openings for, um, unsustainable systems to thrive and profit off of the people, so, um, so the truth is, um, there's a lot of subsidies, and subsidies are just like, you know, pay out payments, like free money to, uh, to go to industries to kind of help them if they're struggling. Um, and a lot of subsidies go to the animal ag industry, which is unsustainable. Um, which doesn't make sense, you know, we don't need it. Um, so we have organic farms and the organic farms don't get subsidies, but you know, they have to pay all this money to grow food that is much healthier than, um, than conventional agriculture can provide for us. Nobody should be eating food with poison in it. Nobody should be eating food with, with unhealthy, um, harmful chemicals in it. Nobody should have that. Everyone should have access, equal access to healthy, natural food.
Like we can't let we can't let the government and politicians decide like you know how we how we grow food. I mean there is to a point it's important, you know, cuz like we can have a lot of problems if people start growing their own food and causing pests and disease, outbreaks everywhere if they do it wrong, which can totally be done if if they're not um they're, if they're not stewarding the land properly. Um and then that can, you know, spread to other farms and then create crop losses and we don't want that um but we also do need to have some personal empowerment and take the time to learn about these things and what we can do to uh, make the world a better place um and provide food production have a f food production opportunities for ourselves home food opportunities okay so I'm going to wrap this up. Um, so this topic, it's very controversial to me. You know, it's all about weed management and the discussion board was all about plastic mulches and like how can we make this better so that organic farmers could use mulches that maybe aren't um, under organic, you know, regulations and everything like that. But that, you know, that's not how we solve the problem. You don't like, you don't look at an unsustainable practice and be like, how can we make that less unsustainable but not completely wipe it out? No, 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 how can we just not use it? Cause it's not sustainable at all. It's completely unnecessary. Um, so this topic is very controversial to me because you know, the only reason people have to use these unsustainable practices and products are because their farming practices are unsustainable. So why put energy into the symptom when we could work together to address the, the origin of the problem and move forward? Okay, so perhaps I'm just missing something and these horticulture classes will help me come up with um, easy, convenient solutions that everyone is waiting for, but yeah. So ultimately, farmers have a weed problem, but instead of looking at the origin of the problem, they look for more convenient and cost-effective ways to sweep it under the rug. They don't realize that they have a weed problem because of improper management practices that they do. Um, and it's so much better to be blissfully ignorant than to actually do the work that it takes to, um, to make a change. So, um, yeah, wrapping up the weed management part. Um, I think it's a short-sighted, I think so short-sighted solutions like the one that the ones that have been mentioned in the discussion about, you know, like, oh, we should put more resources into less harmful chemicals and more biodegradable plastic mulches and other garbage and stuff like that. And that's not going to do anything for us. It's not going to do anything for the people, for our planet. Um, we need we need farmers to be transitioning to more sustainable farming practices so that these plastic mulches are unnecessary. But, but hey, if, if, if like people can develop like sustainable, healthy, natural, um, relevant to the location um, soil and not going to do and not have any negative effects on our environment, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Um, but remember, if that happens, the plastic industry, the agri uh, plastic industry particularly is um, gonna lose out. So you know that they won't be helping with that um, project. Um, but you can be sure that they're gonna do ways to make it difficult for that to happen. Um, should we all just immediately switch over to organic farming practices? No, we need a healthy transition for for all farmers, um, and. I may not be the one to um, to lay that plan out for everybody. There have been farmers who have made the transition, but you know it is quite difficult. You know, once you've put like garbage on the land, it takes a while to get that garbage out. Like for people who are transitioning to organic 
farms, um, like to organic farming, um, it takes years to get certification because there has to be a certain reduced level of toxicity in the soil from the previous agrochemical um, onslaught. <laughs> so it takes years for, for farms to transition to organic. Um, so I think, you know, what we need is uh, we need subsidies for them. We need to stop giving subsidies to unsustainable industries like the uh, like the ag the animal ag industry and conventional um, well farmers all farmers that grow plant material <laughs> plant food for us like they should all be getting subsidies well uh, animal ag farmers should be getting subsidies too but we sh what we should do is help all of these farmers transition to more sustainable agriculture that's what we need so um certain animal farmers um like their their the land completely decimated by by um animal waste you know that we pr probably won't be able to grow anything on that but it can be re rewilded so um farmers can get money for their um for their land to be rewilded as you know uh, biodiversity and um, building the habitat back, rewilding the area so that we can, you know, have biodiversity come back and such, and of course, other animals that are necessary to balance the system that has been messed up by um, animal agriculture. So things like that need to happen, um, uh, and then you know, we just we just need we d we need money to be poured into our food system and just make it more sustainable you know but first we need to you know get all these powerful industries um out and that's that's really hard how do we kick out these powerful industries they're the ones who are like putting the regulations on stuff and policies to benefit them and not the people not the health of the people in this planet and the food that we're ingesting um so ultimately we need to figure out a way to to check their power so that they can't get in the way of um, a sustainable future. Um, yeah, so what do I think? Uh, so, so what do I think of plastic mulch? Is there another way? Plastic mulch, I don't think it's necessary. Like, um, we need, like, we can use compost. Of course, compost needs to be made over time, and that's just another thing that people need to do, but you know, it's, I think it's better. It's better for the soil and it's better for the future of that piece of land um, so that, you know, like, you know, it can build soil life instead of just contaminate the soil. And, uh, you know, it's just putting garbage into the soil. And, you know, microplastics, you know, then we can, we don't want to eat that. So, um, what do I think of this class so far? Um, I think, like, I... I like learning about weeds. I mean, I like learning about plants. So there's been parts of this class where we're like doing um, taxonomic identification of plants, and I like that because you know it's just plant identification. Like that's great. You know, weeds are just you know supposedly like you know change depending on the perspective of the person. So like somebody uh, somebody might see a weed or a plant and think, you know, oh, yeah, I want that in my garden because it's edible. And some might see it as like, oh, no, I don't want this. It's, it's like, it's going to compete with my crop, okay? Um, and, and there's an easy solution for that, and that's companion planting. So plant, so multi-cropping and planting, you know, plants that benefit each, each other. So you have, like, your cash crop or cash crops, and you just, you know, plant them around plants that benefit each other. That's ultimately what needs to be done. Whew. Okay. That was actually a lot. <laughs> so I, I wanted to talk about soil, but um, I think an hour is all I can really handle right now because I need to get back to my chemistry homework. Um, but I'm really glad that I talked about this. Um, Next time, I want to talk about something less academic. <laughs> Maybe something fun. Something fun and exciting, like psychology. But that's, I guess that's academic, in a way. 
something fun though, involving personality and astrology or something. Yeah, something something else. I need like a break. <laughs> I, I, this chemistry homework is ruining me. <laughs> I'm like struggling with all with a lot of these problems, but I'm gonna figure it out. I gotta figure it out before um, the next couple days, cause uh, I gotta turn it in, and then I am going. Um, I'm driving south to go to a little festival that's actually only going to be like a day. Um, but I'm going to be gone for like seven days because I'm also going to visit a friend down south in California. So I'm going to be doing that. So I won't be doing any lives during that time. But when I come back, I definitely will. And I will be posting my schedule on my social media. Um, so check for that. And I hope that this stream has been helpful to someone uh farmers out there gardeners environmentalists i hope everyone benefits from this and has learned something and if you have please share with somebody else please share what you learned with others because we need a more educated world a more world uh that is built from communication and sharing important information so that we can make the world a better place because we all deserve to eat and we all deserve to um, live in a world that isn't filled with garbage <laughs> okay so that's the end of that and I hope you have a pleasant week and live long and prosper <laughs>